Hello everybody and welcome to Wenatchee, Washington. I'm hiking today in the green hills above Wenatchee. This is the Horse Lake area, a bunch of public land set aside. Very grateful to those that were able to acquire this land and make it public. Uh, there's no shortage of geology here to discuss, but I think we're going to be focused on the Ice Age floods today. I, I have a feeling we'll get a decent view overlooking Wenatchee and specifically overlooking Pangborn Bar. Uh, but this is just the, the walk out. I've never been here on this trail before. I'm kind of enjoying it. And there's a little bit of color here for you to enjoy as well. Some arrowleaf balsam root hanging on and some lupin, but uh, most of the color has passed at this point here in late May. We're about to turn into June. And I continue thinking about the Ice Age floods. Um, I don't think this is going to last forever. I think I'm going to eventually mentally uh, go back in time to bedrock and the North Cascades and Baja BC and all that sort of thing. But for now, I'm kind of in that zone with my discussions with Jerome Lessman and Sky Cooley and, and others. And uh, I think I'll go ahead and announce it right now. If you're interested, I, I will be teaching Geology 351 next spring. And it will be a mixture of classroom live streams and uh, field trips with the students. But uh, I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to talk about Ice Age floods. We're going to really carefully read a bunch of papers and do some field work as well. So I'm just kind of sampling a little bit now to know what I can get myself into this coming spring of 2023. Thank you. So we're looking east right now, uh, walking towards the Columbia River Valley. So north is to your left, of course, and uh, north is where Ice Age floodwaters coming down the Columbia River Valley. Everybody agrees on that. Between Chelan and Wen Wenatchee, between Chelan, whoa. Between Chelan and Wenatchee, we have significant amount of water during the Ice Age coming down the Columbia Valley. Okay, so we can all agree on that. The evidence for that are, are high, uh, ice rafted erratics that are high up in these hillsides, uh, flood deposits down low, ample evidence, multiple kinds of evidence talking about, hey man, it's nice in here, look at these flowers. This is a great slope that has not gotten beaten by the sun yet. cool wet day but some pleasant flowers to enjoy here in the Horse Lake area above Wenatchee. I'll put the GPS location in the link below on how to find this spot and where to park and how to amble your way out here. It's kind of the end of the flower season here. You can see across the way, come on Gizmo, you know, you get a south-facing slope and it's it's cooked pretty, pretty brown by now. But uh, here on a north-facing slope, delightful. So to chase the flowers, I guess we've got to keep going up in elevation as the weeks continue on. If that's our focus, I don't know if it is, but it's a nice plus. But this is a rambling video. <laughs> And the rambling video today is, uh, I think we're going to get a view of Pangborn Bar up here uh, in underneath East Wenatchee, and I've got a few questions. You know, just continuing with the discussions I've had with Jerome Lessman and others late, uh, recently. So, yeah, give you a few more moments with these flowers, and then uh, 
I'll start again with you once I get on that next ridge. Meadowlark, nice. Okay, we're heading where those uh, bikers are going. So, before we get our view, which I think will be up there, let's run down the conventional story. Ice Age floods, Wenatchee, ready, go. There was an Okanagan lobe, an Okanagan ice sheet to the north of here. That sheet was holding back Glacial Lake Columbia which flooded the Columbia River Valley to the east of Grand Coulee Dam today. Best we can say, 14,000 years ago, there was a catastrophic failure of that ice dam. Not the famous ice dam in Idaho holding back Glacial Lake Missoula. We're talking about a different ice dam with a different glacial lake. Got it? And 14,000 years ago, that ice dam breaks in northern Washington, and we catastrophically drain Glacial Lake Columbia. And where does that water drain? It comes down the Columbia River Valley. It comes down around the Horn, Bridgeport, Brewster, Chelan, Eniot, Wenatchee, that's what we're about to look at, continues around the corner, takes a left-hand turn, cruises past the mouth of Moses Cooley, creates the mega ripples, the giant current ripples at West Bar, continues vantage through Sentinel Gap, where we did the pop-up geology last week, on to the Pasco Basin, through Wallula Gap, through the Columbia River Gorge, Portland, blah, 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 all the way to the ocean. Okay, 14,000 years ago is the big date. Were there more floods than that one? Almost certainly. Was the 14,000 year flood the biggest? No. There are ice rafted erratics that have been dated now with some work by Andrea Balbus a few years ago. And I haven't done my homework now, shame on me. Something like 18,000 years ago. Maybe a couple that are 21, 22,000 years ago. But the point is, the dates that we have right here at Wenatchee, Ice Age Floods Country, is between, let's say, 25,000 years ago and 13,000 years ago, calendar years ago. And that's a nice, tidy little story, and we've got some dates, and we go, wow, that's such a long time ago, and that sort of thing. Okay, well, let's flash forward a little bit. Flash forward to visiting with Jerome Lesman and others. And Jerome has big floods. Hi there. Thank you. And so far, Jerome doesn't have any dates that I know of with Ice Age flood water coming down the Okanagan Valley, which is due north of here. But he's got these amazing landforms, and he's not the first to look at them. You know, there's been a century worth of work done on them, but no dates. And yes, you've heard my underhanded comments, I suppose, in the last two weeks. If you talk to American Ice Age floods geologists, nobody's talking about Ice Age floods coming down the Okanagan Valley. And if they, grant, if they are willing to admit that there was some water coming down the Okanagan, it was a minor story and not that big a deal. Well, here's where I come in. And you're like, what? what do you mean here's where you come in? You don't know anything about this. And you're right, I don't. I'm just a teacher. But I like to learn a variety of things. Oh, yeah, we're going to get a nice view here. A surprise to me from talking to Jerome 
is that he sees the elevation of the top of Pangborn Bar matching pretty nicely with the elevation of those other high flats further to the north. And Jerome continues, you know it's preliminary, right? You, you know it's just thinking out loud and sharing his uh, early thoughts. Jerome continues his thoughts and say, well, what if that great terrace or highest flat that's most intriguing to Jerome because he, he, he's going with the idea that a lot of material was dumped into the Okanagan off the frame here at some time in the past. Jerome says, is it possible that great terrace high flat up by Omac and Tenasket continued at one time all the way down to here to Pangborn? And if that's true, what does that mean? And if that great terrace is diachronous, a term that I learned last time during that follow-up with Jerome, if it's diachronous, I guess that means that we're not dumping everything on a Tuesday, uh, but during one major advance and retreat, you're laying down a lot of gravels as the ice advances and then while the ice is retreating as well, not as quite as catastrophic or dramatic but still tied to one moment in time. I guess I won't continue to lose elevation here. Still thinking out loud. I think the conventional story from Richard Waite's work is that we have Pangborn Bar on the inside of this curve, and that's why this Pangborn Bar is there. It's where the water is slower on the inside as the high velocity flood water comes around the corner. And that makes some sense. But if you think uh, differently about this pile of marbles, instead of just being a, a, an inside of a bend deposit, I think what Jerome is saying is, was it really just deposited on the inside or was this valley wall to valley wall totally filled at the Pangborn Bar level, totally filled all the way up to the Great Terrace level at Chelan and further north? And again, implying is this a connection of stuff that came down the Okanagan? Basically, that's what I'm wondering. Are these rocks that came down the Okanagan? Are these rocks that did not come down the Okanagan, but came down the Columbia Valley from points further east in northeastern Washington and Idaho? Are they both? Are they neither? How can we tell? Last comment. Oh, I guess I will wander a little further down continue to give you some scenery to look at as I'm mumbling here. Still preliminary work from Jerome. But is it possible that water coming down the Okanagan is very early in the Ice Age floods story and very late in the Ice Age flood story? And here's what I mean. Conventionally, you know, most of the, if you know about the Ice Age floods, the Missoula floods, that sort of story, what's the, what's the time frame for the story? Yeah, it's like, you know, 20,000 years ago until 14,000 years ago, or 18,000 years ago until 13,000 years ago. Depends on which website you've gone to, depends on which scientific paper you've gone to. But that's the chronology that's worked out to this point as carefully as possible. But I think some of you know that there is emerging evidence, and that's what Sky Cooley and others are working on, or continuing to work on. Are there significantly older Ice Age floods? Floods that came across Eastern Washington one million years ago, or even older? And what evidence is there for that? Well, that's a whole set of programs, I guess, coming next spring 
But the thought here is that if we have incredibly high drama tunnel valleys with massive amounts of water under the ice, is it possible a million years ago we dumped most of these rocks in and you're like, ho, 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 no, 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 no. I've, I've, read, I've read the work on Pangborn Bar and everything was deposited 18,000 years ago. And where do those dates come from? They come from isolated ice rafted erratics that are up here in high, found by Bill Long and others. And Andrea Balbus and, and John Stone and Joel Gombiner have some ex exposure dates now, giving us a rough date of 18,000 years ago in that vicinity. Well, I'm wondering out loud, is that just dressing? Are the 18,000 year flood deposits just the surface? Just the decoration on the top? And is the major story of bringing in most of these rocks of the Pangborn flood bar far older and down the Okanagan as opposed to Northeast Washington, etc. How would you go about trying to tease out that information? Finally, the giant current ripples that Jerome and Sky Cooley have been working with you know, up on, what was it called? Can't think of the name of the flat right now, right above OMAC. Pausing, I should be able to come over. Is it possible those flood, those, those current ripples are very late in the game? Younger than 14,000 years ago, which is the date that we have uh, for the last flood. Is it possible those giant current ripples up near OMAC is water coming down the Okanagan that's younger than 14,000 years ago. That'd be fun to tie down. So you can see that it's one thing just to ask out loud, hey, I wonder if there was Ice Age floods that uh, came down the Okanagan. Okay, that's one step. The next step is what evidence do you have in the Okanagan Valley that there was a fair amount of water coming down the Okanagan? Okay, fine. And now we're to the last question in my mind, which is interesting, which is the timing of this. And again, is it possible that the Okanagan has the highest drama recorded in those terraces? But are those deposits, uh, are those deposits brought in a, a million years ago? I don't know how radical it is to ask that out loud. I don't know who might have an interest in that question. But to me, I'm seeing Okanagan geology here at Wenatchee, something that I did not see before. And am I sure of it? No, I'm not sure of it. But the potential is there and that's the fun, to continue to discuss these ideas and for you and I just to have a front row seat as these geologists continue to work on these questions. Thank you, I love you and goodbye.